The fourth generation Cadillac Seville, produced between the years 1992 and 1997, is an iconic American luxury performance sedan from the 90s. It completely changed the perception of the Cadillac brand at the time, and marked a turnaround for the General Motors luxury vehicle division that had been struggling for over a decade with poor reviews and sales figures. The model range at the time began from a clean slate, with focus on sharp designs, fresh technology and performance. The Cadillac Seville took the domestic luxury segment by storm, being well received by journalists and customers alike at the time. In 1992, the year the new generation was first presented, it was awarded Car of the Year by Motor Trend magazine and made it to the Car and Drivers 10 Best list. Sales figures exploded as the model garnered praise for its crisp exterior styling, along with its slow and sleek interior design, state-of-the-art technology and excellent performance. With its competitive price and the introduction of the highly advanced North Star V8 engine in 1993, it became a serious contender against the likes of BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Lexus. A serious performance bargain. Almost 30 years later, in 2021, it is safe to say that the public opinion of the Cadillacsville has changed. The best way to describe it would be bittersweet legacy, its former glory eroded by many dismayed owners over the years, a result of the Norster and its catastrophic reliability issues. Yet, it is a car that is admired by many people because of its beautiful styling and character. It is one of those cars that people lust after but don't necessarily want to own. This video will be split into two parts. The first part will be a review about the Cadillac Seville based on my impressions after owning one myself for almost a year. The second part will be a buying guide, where I go through what to look out for when buying this model, as well as common issues and how much they cost to repair. If you want to skip ahead to the buying guide, you can do so using the timestamps in the description below, or the video chapters in the YouTube player. If you like this format and want to see more reviews and buying guides for other cars, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would also love to hear your own experience with Cadillacs of this era, and if you have any fond or bad memories of these cars, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. First, some background and technical information about this Cadillac. The Seville lineup is divided into two sub-models, the SDS, also known as the Seville Touring Sedan, and the SLS, the Seville Luxury Sedan. As the names imply, the SDS is the more powerful car of the two, with the engine and transmission tuned for performance. The SLS, on the other hand, is more comfort-oriented with softer suspension and tuned for more torque for overtaking. Both models started with the same 4.9 liter V8, producing 200 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque, made it to a 4 speed automatic transmission. In 1993, the engine was upgraded to the modern 4.6 liter Northstar aluminium V8 in the STS, producing 295 horsepower and 290 pound feet of torque. A year later, in 1994, the SLS received a differently tuned version of the Northstar, pushing out 270 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque. This generation of Seville remained largely the same during its whole production run, but the later model years received a small power increase and in 1996 the interior received a major facelift to make it more modern and up to date. If you want to know more about the interesting features and technology of this model, you can watch my other video where I go through them in great detail. I also have an in-depth tour video if you want to have a closer look at the car, links for these in the description, or in the upper right corner. Now, the styling. Whether you like the North Star Cadillacs or not, I'm sure that we can all agree on that this car is absolutely gorgeous. The design has aged really well and is in my opinion timeless. I cannot think of many luxury sedans that look so elegant and imposing at the same time. Even the design legend of Mercedes-Benz back then, Bruno Sacco, praised the look of the car when it was first presented and the rumor has it that he could not think of any other car model that he liked better at the time. The design is staring, with its length of 5.2 meters and protruding bumpers that have pinstriping around them. Its harmonious lines make the car look really crisp, complemented well with the traditional long Cadillac wedge-shaped front and that iconic large grille. The rear adds to these elements further with the long third brake light stretching across the entire deck lid, along with quad exhaust pipes. This makes the car look classy and exotic, and it doesn't feel bloated at all. Another underrated detail of the design is the stance of the car and how low the roofline is for a car this size, creating a sleek and sporty look. So what about the interior? It has not aged as gracefully as the outside in my opinion, but it's still an elegant minimalist design with liberal amounts of genuine wood veneer trim all around it. A traditional opulent American car look if you will, amplified even more by plush leather seats that are really comfortable and supportive. There are also nice touches to the interior such as the pedals being lined with chrome trim and the Cadillac logo being embossed on the wood panel above the glove compartment. But unfortunately, the quality of some of the materials are not quite up there with its European rivals. The vinyl on the door panels and dashboard are soft to the touch and feel quite high-end for a car interior of the 90s, and the leather on the seats is really supple. However, most of the plastics feel very brittle, especially the turn signal stock and the shifter knob, that make loud clicking noises when used. 
I've also noticed many squeaks and rattles on my 150,000 mile Seville. The cabin feels spacious and the driving position is relaxed with armrests just at the right position for both arms. Visibility is excellent for modern car standards and easy to maneuver as a result, even if this wheel did not come with parking sensors, which makes parking in tight spaces a bit of a hassle. The rear seat is also a really nice place to be, with a comfortable leather bucket style bench that you sink into. I wouldn't call this seating position very ergonomic, but it's certainly relaxing. You also have an extra vent in the center where you can even adjust the fan speed for extra ventilation. The legroom is excellent due to the car's long wheelbase, better than most sedans and just as good as the most expensive luxury cars, such as the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and BMW 7 Series. The gauge cluster is mostly analog with large and clear dials, but it also has a digital component for engine data, such as coolant temperature and battery voltage. It's not entirely intuitive and takes some time getting used to. The same can be said about the climate control, which is located to the right of the instrument cluster. While it is easy to reach, it can be a bit awkward to use as some buttons are hidden behind the steering wheel. Storage areas are surprisingly scarce in this generation of Seville. The glove box and storage area below the armrest are quite small, and there are no side pockets on the doors. There are no cup holders either, but there is a small compartment by the rear view mirror where you can store your sunglasses. Better than nothing, right? Fortunately, the trunk space is quite large and accessible, so there is no need to worry about cargo space in this car. The rear seats do not fold. As for safety features, the car came standard with ABS, traction control and airbags for both the driver and passenger. Impressive for a car from 1992, but to not be fooled by its supposed safety. Despite being a luxury car, it was given a poor rating by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The crash tests were not exactly impressive either. Link in the description for the curious. So how was the Cadillac Seville to drive? The Northstar system is unquestionably the heart and soul of this car. It is powerful enough and has impressive performance even for today's standards. Given the Cadillac Seville STS a 0-60 time of 6.9 seconds and a top speed of 150 miles per hour. The 4-speed transmission is also excellent, being both smooth and responsive under all driving conditions. The shifts are virtually seamless. But above everything else is the sound of this engine that is matched only by much more exclusive cars. Opinion, it is one of the best sounding engines ever made, even up there with the Italians. Being a front wheel drive car bordering 300 horsepower, one would think that it has a lot of torque steer and struggling for traction, but this is not the case. Surprisingly, the torque steer is virtually non existent and the car is predictable even under hard acceleration. The Cadillac engineers did a commendable job of working around these limitations by using clever technology such as their computerized suspension, and it really transforms the driving dynamics of a front wheel drive car. However, one drawback is its turning circle, which is certainly not great and can be problematic when you want to do U turns or exit a parking lot. In terms of handling, the car also performs respectably for its size. It will never match the dynamics of a BMW due to its softer ride and weight distribution limitations, but it is less floating than one might think and I expected its cornering ability to be far worse. This being said, there is no denying that it suffers from understeer and body roll when pushed hard, and the overly assisted power steering makes the car less exciting to drive. The brakes also leave more to be desired for a car with this power. They are not exactly confidence inspiring, but they do their job. At the end of the day it is not intended to be an agile sports car, but rather a touring car with great performance and exotic character that can travel comfortably at higher speeds on longer journeys. And I believe the Cadillac Seville excels at this. It strikes a nice balance between performance and refinement, and you never feel that the power is lacking from this engine. As for comfort, the Cadillac also lives up to its reputation. The ride is supple and the sophisticated road sensing electrical suspension soaks up most road imperfections. The cabin is well isolated from road noise and a very relaxing place to be in. Driving this Cadillac evokes so much emotion and excitement. This is typically not something I associate with a luxury car. The engine being so energetic and effortless combined with the glorious North Star V8 Grant makes the driving experience something truly special, especially considering the fact that you can do it also in comfort. All in all, there are very few compromises and the car is really versatile. One might think that the performance of the North Star V8 comes at a cost, namely fuel economy, but it turns out that it is surprisingly fuel efficient for its size and power, with an average fuel consumption of 20 mpg under mixed driving conditions. On the highway it is even better, I managed to get 26 miles per gallon when driving fuel efficiently, as I found out in my hypermodeling challenge video I posted not too long ago. Link to that one in the description, in case you're interested. However, the Seville does become thirsty in stop and go city driving, you can expect the gas mileage to be in the lower 15s.
So what do 90 Seville's cost nowadays? Well, as with most classic luxury cars, the market value varies drastically depending on the condition and the mileage of the car. But in general, Northstar Cadillacs have depreciated so much over the years to the point where they are seriously affordable and outright performance bargains. This is a consequence of these cars having glaring reliability issues that I will address in my buying guide, and the fact that most luxury cars have poor second-hand value and are generally expensive to keep on the road. There are typically two categories that you will encounter, the neglected and high mileage cars that are astonishingly cheap, and the low mileage cars in pristine condition that are significantly more expensive. In the European market, the market value range is between 2,000 to 6,000 euros. By the time of making this video, there are only 11 for sale right now in Europe. In the North American market, the market value range is between 2,000 to 14,000 dollars. By the time of making this video, there are only 6 Cadillac Seville's for sale right now in the US, excluding Craigslist sellers. This car is becoming seriously rare and might even become collectible in the near future. So what should you look out for if you're interested in buying this generation of Seville and Northstar Calyx in general, and what are the common problems? First of all, it is important to note that older luxury cars are typically much more prone to reliability issues compared to the average car model out there due to their electronics and over-engineered features that don't always age well. Unless you buy a well-maintained example that has been taken care of by previous owners, it is highly likely that something electrical will be broken on it. However, this is something that rarely interferes with the powertrain or operation of the car. Let us first address the elephant in the room, the infamous Northstar engine reliability. One of the most prevalent issues with this engine is head gasket failures, which causes overheating problems and makes the car undrivable. For many Northstar owners this has been the death sentence of their cars, as the repair cost is astronomically expensive and typically exceeds the value of their car. This problem is due to a construction flaw of the head bolts in this engine, which do not have coarse enough threads for an aluminium block. This causes them to be pulled out of the engine block itself, resulting in a serious coolant leak into the combustion chamber. This is especially likely to happen if the car has been overheated previously, or if the cooling system has not been well maintained. The engine has to be removed from the chassis to do this repair, so you can expect a cost of around $3,000 to $5,000 to fix it. Fortunately, there is an aftermarket head stud kit made by Northstar Performance that prevents this issue from happening, but that does not take away the cost for doing it. The worst part of it all is that it is impossible to predict when the head gasket issues occur. The mileage seems to be irrelevant and can happen even on low mileage cars because of the design flaw. For well, that reason, it is always a risk to buy a Northstar Cadillac, even if not all of them are affected by this. If you are looking at buying one, it is important to check that there is no white smoke coming from the exhaust pipes, that the coolant level is good and that the car does not overheat. Those are signs of a blown head gasket, and it is a good idea to test drive the car for a longer period of time to ensure that the coolant temperature does not slowly creep up. If you notice any signs of this, I highly recommend that you walk away from that example to save your wallet. Another common issue with the Northstar engine is its oil leaks around seals and valve covers of the engine. While this is not catastrophic, it can be really difficult and expensive to replace all of these seals and gaskets as the working space is quite limited. For instance, the oil pan seal requires the whole subframe and engine to be removed to fix it, which costs a fortune as you can expect. These repairs can cost anywhere from $300 to $5000. Ouch! There is another flaw with the Northstar engine, namely the tight working space I just mentioned. If some parts in the engine fail, they are likely to be time consuming and a pain to replace, consequently making these jobs expensive because of the labor involved. A perfect example is the alternator, which requires you to remove the torque struts, radiator, the fans, battery and even then is a challenge to remove. All of this work for a simple alternator replacement. In other words, as long as nothing goes wrong, the Northstar does not necessarily have to break the bank, but once things do, it is going to burn a hole in your wallet. But there are not only negative aspects about this engine. Apart from these issues, the Norsa is a really durable and reliable engine that was designed to last for a long time without being dependent on frequent service intervals, with the exception of oil changes. Many Norsa owners have reported their cars reaching more than 300,000 miles on the clock, which is quite impressive in my opinion. Let us now move on to the exterior. The Seville does not seem to have any major rust issues even after almost 30 years, but make sure to check the front edge of the hood, the roof and the rear wheel wells. Another problem area in the Seville is the taillights. Almost all of them have a tendency to fog up with condensation in wet weather due to poor seals. It is also common for them to crack. Make sure to check the trunk for water leaks, which is also a common problem on the Seville and caused by poor rubber seals. This can cause mold issues and corrosion, so make sure that the entire trunk is dry, including the spare wheel area. The trunk pull-down mechanism also has a tendency to fail with age, as it starts to activate constantly, but this can usually be fixed by cleaning the contacts inside the motor. Another problem to look out for is the third brake light strip. These commonly break and they are no longer manufactured by GM. There is a company called Leadfix that can rebuild them, but this costs $200 and is only available in the US. As far as the interior is concerned, there are not that many common problems. The power windows can fail as a result of window regulators breaking, so make sure to check that all windows are working. Wears and cracks on the driver's seat leather and center armrest is common on high mileage cars, but this is purely cosmetic. 
Make sure to check that the shifter knob is not broken on Seville models up until 1996. The plastic mechanism is quite brittle and fails easily, and it can be difficult to find a replacement in the right color. Also double check that the horn and climate control unit is working, including the heater. And lastly, I will now bring up the common issues with the electronics that are plentiful in this car. One of the biggest weak points of this model is the electrical road sensing suspension that is prone to break. Not only this, but GM has discontinued the production of these, so it is rather difficult to find a replacement, as most of them have broken already. Thankfully, there are aftermarket suspension kits that allow you to replace the stock parts with a conventional strut and spring setup. I will have a link in the description where you can buy these. But this of course affects your ride and you will always be played with the service ride control warning message on the instrument cluster. Virtually every North Star Cadillac has this message these days, and there's typically nothing to worry about. Another common problem with the electronics is the somewhat old-fashioned anti-theft system that has a tendency to act up. This one is particularly tedious as it sometimes can prevent you from starting your car for no clear reason, which can leave you stranded somewhere if you're unlucky. The first indication of this problem is a warning message on the dash saying theft system problem, car may not restart. Really odd wording in my opinion. It tends to be possible to bypass it by unplugging the battery for an hour or two, but not always. The culprit is usually related to worn wires connected to the ignition lock cylinder. There are easy ways to trick the system using resistors and soldering, but if you want to truly fix it you will have to replace the whole ignition lock cylinder. This is a serious hassle and can cost up to $500, including a visit to a locksmith. Another issue is dim headlights, especially the low beams, which can happen sometimes for no clear reasons. This can be really difficult to troubleshoot, but the likely culprits are worn wires, a broken headlight relay, or problems with the Twilight Sentinel system. These are the most common issues to look out for when buying a Cadillac Seville. As you can imagine, the repair costs can pile up if you're unlucky, so it's important to be prepared to set aside some extra money in a worst case scenario. You can expect to have to spend around $1500 per year to keep it in good shape. Most of the time less, but it's always good to have a buffer. I would also highly recommend only buying cars that have a proper service history and have been well cared for by previous owners. That way you can avoid many of these problems and repair costs, as they are more common in neglected examples. This being said, it does not always have to be a nightmare scenario, and I would say that the North Star Cadillacs generally are reliable and well-built cars that should be relatively inexpensive to run for old luxury car standards. So which example should you look for? In my opinion, your best bet is to find a high mileage Seville in good condition and complete service history, unless you are a collector. This way it is less likely that the North Star will suffer from head gasket issues, and most of the problem areas are likely to have been sorted out already, making it much cheaper to own. Also, if you can find one that has already had the head bolts replaced, that is a huge plus as you don't have to worry about the head gasket blowing. So to conclude, the Nordstrom Seville is not the best car to own if you want peace of mind and cheap running costs. You can always settle with the early 4.9 liter engine if you value reliability as it is a proven and bulletproof powertrain that does not suffer from the head gasket issues. But you will miss out on that Nordstrom performance that is far superior, especially on the highway. But all in all, I think that the Seville is a seriously underrated model given its current price point, and is unparalleled when it comes to value for money. You get sports car performance, opulence and luxury car comfort for only $2000. Really quite impressive. It had a reputation for being a performance bargain back when it was released in 1992, and 30 years later, it is safe to say that it still is. Thank you for watching the video. Until next time. See you soon.